So, um, first off, I'd like to thank you all for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, it's very scary, overwhelming, but it's a rewarding feeling um, because if I'm being quite honest, back then um, I had to actually plan my funeral before I had ever planned my future. So that's what makes it very scary and rewarding uh, being here with you all today. Um, okay, so my name is Grand Medina and I'm 23 years old. I grew up in Anaheim, California. Uh, growing up, I had both parents. My mother worked as a social worker for Orange County for 24 years, and my dad was a plumber for 22 years. Uh, growing up, uh, both my parents, they had their own addictions and their own battles. My, uh, my parents were both alcoholics and they both um, struggled with methamphetamine. Um, growing up, I've seen a whole lot of violence uh, being around gangs and um, have either been through or seen um, uh, all types of abuse. So yeah, but this was my normal and if it was not a, if it was not an almost, it was an everyday routine. Um, my dad tried really hard to distract me from it all though. Uh, he enrolled me in sports. Um, at the age of five, I played softball and it really did help me. But unfortunately, you know, um, I, when I got off the field, it was, I had uh, a lot of anger, I had a lot of pain and um, I was always so scared because I knew what was to come at home. And, you know, with my parents being on those addiction, I never knew what type of mother was gonna have. Um, yeah, I never knew what type of mother I was gonna have. It was, you know, my mother, she, she, was, she was a raging alcoholic, you know, she was either gonna hit me or hit my brother, you know, um, she was most likely gonna go back to jail or she would be my favorite, I like to say, she would just sleep all day. Um, when I was 14, I had to get my first job to help my brother and my dad with the bills. My mom's addictions had finally caught up with her and um, it forced her to resign. Two years later, my dad eventually followed in her footsteps and lost his job as well. Um, my parents decided um, from then on, we would move to New Mexico. Um, if you don't know, New Mexico is actually one of the dangerous states and where we were living, it was a very dangerous city. Um, my first day of school, I was approached by my family's old gang, and they had given me a choice. They had told me um, I was either going to be with them or I was going to be against them, and believe me, in a small town like that with, like, less than 80, 400 people, you know, you don't want to be with those, with that gang, but you don't want to be against them either, so... Um, from then on, I went back home and I told my parents what had taken place and they knew right away I couldn't stay with them anymore. I couldn't be there with them. And so at age 16, my parents um, decided to uh, emancipate me. And um, sorry. Um, I just remember, um, I just remember feeling when I got emancipated, I was very, um, I felt very happy. Um, so uh, after I got emancipated, I came back to California. Um, I lived with my aunt, but that didn't last long because shortly after when I arrived back. Um, I got pregnant at almost 17. Um, I moved in with my partner and I, imme I immediately rolled back into school. Um, I went to school at, uh, at Gilbert Continuation School. Um, and from there, I was offered a prenatal class. And uh, to me, that class was such a blessing because um, 
I had no idea how to, you know, um, prepare to like be a mother or, you know, um, I had no idea how to like schedule doctor's appointments, insurances, and things of like that. I didn't even know what prenatals were. I didn't know why I needed to take them. So that class definitely helped me at my teacher. Her name was Misty. She was very supportive and she helped me a lot. She even signed me up with a um, with a family partnership class. Um, it's a nurse who's with you for two years and she's with you um, and your child. And um, um, sorry. Um, yeah, she was she was more than just a nurse with me. She she helped me with with a lot of things. She even helped me um, prepare for school. And from then on, I knew um, I wanted to be just like her. You know, she was a resource to me. Um, and I wanted to be just like her. I wanted to be um, that resource to other young women as well, or expecting mothers, or just anybody who had the little to no resources um, with insurance or things like that. So um, a few months after that, I graduated. I graduated three months early and I had my daughter. My nurse was with me every step of the way. She even started to help me back to school, but little do we both know how much more longer I'd actually have to put that on hold because after my daughter had turned two months, I was, um, I was expecting my second child. Um, time passed and I eventually graduated from the family ship program and my nurse, my nurse, um, my nurse had to leave us, so it was very hard. And when she left, I felt like the little support I had was gone and me and my partner struggled a lot. He was getting in trouble and we were both just struggling to work like our survival jobs just to make ends meet. And uh, we both weren't happy and my depression had gotten worse than it, was ever, than it ever was. And I just didn't want to be here no more at all. And um, the year 2019, I began to experiment a little bit with drugs. And um, but mainly I was, I was, I turned into a little alcoholic myself. I was drinking a lot. Um, and then things were going downhill until one day I had uh, took my kids to the park and an old best friend of mine from school was there as well with her daughter. And immediately I remember when she, when she had asked me how I was and, um, how I was doing, she told, um, I just broke down to her and I told her I wasn't doing well at all. And, you know, she sat there, she cried with me. And um, she asked me if I was ready to change and if I was serious about it. Because what she was about to tell me, um, she said the school she's about to tell me to was absolutely no joke at all. Like, I had to take it seriously. And, and I was ready. I told her, yes, I, I want to know. And it turns out she was actually an alumni herself um, from Hope Builders. She's an alumni from Hope Builders. And um, she helped me. It took a couple hours, but we filled out the application and it all went up there. It all went uphill from there. Um, my first day of orientation, I thought all the instructors, I thought everyone was crazy. <laughs> um, I've been on my own since I was 16 and the amount of, um, rules and how much studying I had to do, how much exams we, we did. They let us know it would be two, three exam, two to three exams a week. I thought they were all crazy. I thought I thought I was in way over my head. Um, yeah, I thought I was just in way over my head. But that first week of school, I remember uh, Ms. Diaz, our instructor, she had told us all congratulations. And I thought that was so weird that she was telling us congratulations for our first week, but she told us congratulations because not a lot of people make it the first week. It, it does take dedication and it's hard work. You're studying all night. I remember I would study up to like 3 a.m., but that's how serious I was about it. And it meant a lot to me when she told me congratulations because it showed me she really did care and I really needed to, to hear that from her. And that may sound silly to people, but to me, it was everything. Um, 
she genuinely cared for us and I know I didn't want to to disappoint her or any other instructors that um, I had at the time. And um, I realized I wasn't alone as the, as the um, class kept going and as the course was going. A lot of students as myself, you know, we all opened up and we realized, you know, we all had struggles. So we all felt safe with each other. And I started to finally feel happy. Um, because I knew I wasn't the only one going through something. And I didn't come, I wasn't the only one that came from a bad background. Um, unfortunately, throughout the program, I did have two losses. Um, and it really, it really hit me really hard. And um, on May 1st of this year, my family, we, you know, we received the scariest news my boyfriend, sister, kids, and my brother-in-law. Sorry. Um, um, they were in a in a shooting, and uh, and it unfortunately um it took my brother-in-law's life. <laughs> but um. But despite everything, you know, that my family was going through, the, um, they were really there for me. They told me to keep pushing because it was, it was a lot on me and my family. But they told me to keep pushing, and I did. And I talked to the instructors, and, you know, Ms. Rebecca, Ms. Diaz, um, Ms. Ida, they were all there for me. And then um, on May 30th, um, the day of my brother-in-law's funeral and one of my actually um, a, a really big exam came up for us as well um, I got I received another phone call from my side of the family and it was an unexpected um, phone call from my grandmother she told me that she was um, she was on her last as well and she told me how proud she was of me that um, I came a long way and she just wanted me to, she wanted me to just keep myself on track and to not let this, um, you know, to not let this um, distract me of anything. So to just keep going, because that's mainly what she wanted for me. And I remember feeling the, the biggest, just the biggest, um, the biggest weight on my shoulders and, I thought at the time I was going to be done with hope builders, to be honest. I thought I was, it was too much of me in the pain I was feeling, but um, for weeks I was even unfocused and I did fail one exam for the first time. But, sorry, um, but talking to Miss Rebecca, talking to Miss Diaz, they were, they were there for me. They, um, they told me not to, to quit because I didn't deserve to quit and I deserve to finish. Um, and I remember Miss Diaz telling me I earned it. Like, I, I earned it. And they both told me to just take the weekend and to just think about it. But it, it meant a lot to me because my instructors, you know, they believed in me. And they wanted me, they wanted the best for me, and they wanted me to keep pushing. And I remember Ms. Rebecca telling me, like, if I didn't think that you could finish and you would do something good with yourself, I would let you quit, but I'm not gonna let you. So, so you know, I pushed through, I came back that Monday, and I retook that exam, and I passed, and I, it felt amazing being sent out to my externship because I killed it. Um, so today, I can tell you that I am now starting my, um, I'm now starting off my career with an amazing opportunity with St. Joseph Health. Um, I'll be starting on September 13th. Um, and I would just like to tell you all, you know, being a part of Hope Builders was such a blessing to my family and I. Um, and I will forever be grateful and thankful for getting this chance and for all the instructors and everybody that came into my life and pushed me because I needed to be pushed and I needed to be, um, I needed, I needed it. So, 
um, and I can guarantee you if it wasn't for Hope Builders, I wouldn't be here today because I was in a very bad place, but it, it works and it helps. And I'm very, I'm very thankful for, for Hope Builders. I really am because what they're doing and how, how, how much they really do care for us, it really does make a difference. So I just want to say thank you.